All right, so uh, before Natalie died, I talked to a lot of police officers about what was going on. A lot compared to the amount that I had talked to previously, because, uh, you know, most of my friends don't take too kindly to people who talk to cops. That's because the cops are crooked. The cops do bad things to homeless people, and most of my friends are homeless. Now, at first, I tried talking to them. I tried getting a hold of Natalie and Alicia and Maddie before I ever went to the cops. I figured that was the correct, proper, and righteous thing to do. I mean, after all, I was being assaulted for stalking a girl that I didn't stalk, raping a girl that I didn't rape, molesting a girl that I didn't molest. Meanwhile, she's not a girl, she's a woman. In addition, that woman never said that I raped her. Never. She never said I molested her. People keep pushing that, though. Her dad sure as shit pushed that shit. Of course, he actually did that shit. Now, I went to the police. They told me they have real police work to do. Now, how many people did I threaten to kill between when I left Virginia, between when I got to Virginia, matter of fact, and my grandmother's funeral? One. I'd threatened to kill one person, myself. Hundreds of people had threatened to kill me by that point in time. I went to the police. They told me they had real police work to do. This was before Natalie died. They told me I just needed to man up. So then, after Natalie died, See, the cops didn't take it seriously until she was dead, and then they were seriously engrossed in making sure that I went down for shit I didn't do. Shit the Bollinger should have told the truth about a year earlier. So, uh, I was trying to tell on the officers, and I was trying to tell the officers what was going on with Natalie's case. They obviously knew what was going on because they were busy harassing me, for five days straight. <clears throat> Separating me from Corbin Dallas and other witnesses. Other people who were trying to help me. Running me off from everywhere that I went. Refusing to take my report still. Just like Officer West had done with that protection order. He refused to take my report. Officers across the board outright refused to take my report. They refused to take one from Aaron Cockerham. They refused to take one from Miss Peaches. They refused to take one from Carmia. They refused a lot of people. Meanwhile, the Bollingers are slandering my name and playing head games, and these officers are in cahoots with them. I can prove this. So then, I call 911, because obviously doing what it is that the officers had said in Broomfield wasn't working. They said I needed to find a uniform officer to talk to. I tried that for five days straight. It ultimately resulted in them assaulting me for being suicidal, and I wasn't suicidal. I wanted to die. But I was trying to catch the son of a bitch that killed Natalie. I thought it was Ted or Tim. So did Shelly and Danica, by the way. Why? Well, you should read Natalie's fucking email to me. Ted almost beat Miss Shelly to death. With curb stomping her. And that's the guy that she's protecting. Yeah, yeah, I'm a bad guy. So, 
going to talk to a uniform officer didn't work repeatedly. It didn't work in Boulder. It didn't work in Haxton. It didn't work in Chapel. It didn't work in Broomfield. It didn't work in Arapahoe County. It didn't work anywhere. So, if you call 911, they have to make a report, right? They have to take your report if you call 911, right? Well, Officer Michael Beard didn't. I called 911 there. Officer Jordan Anderson didn't. I called 911 there. So, why is it that I threatened the President of the United States and lit a fire and then had these nut jobs who had been harassing me and threatening my life actually turn it in? Well, because Katie Cahill wasn't going to do it. Shannon Alvarado wasn't going to do it. Miss Peaches wasn't going to do it. Mandy Hughes wasn't going to do it. Not that the police would have listened to them anyway. But they'll listen to the people who are harassing me and the people who are threatening my life, the people who are fucking hurting me physically and financially and mentally. They'd listen to those people. So why did I light that fire? To force the police to do their goddamn jobs. They still didn't. They turned off their body cameras and broke the law. And it's fine because they turned off their body cameras. It's their word against mine. Meanwhile, there's plenty of witnesses. They won't talk to the witnesses. I'm fighting for our rights, not just mine. This is the Constitution that was flushed down the toilet. Not one person's rights. All of our rights. So yeah, I'm still speaking out. Are you going to make it illegal for me to speak out? That's not going to stop me. You make it illegal for me to defend myself? That's not going to stop me. If it's illegal for me, but not for you, then it's not illegal. And I'm going to do it. Well, within limitations, you guys are willing to kill people. I'm not. If I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kill you with time and you're going to sit for a while. My dad, up there in Washington State, he tells me it's just too big. It wouldn't have been too big if he'd uh, actually stepped up to the plate a year earlier. You know, by the time I uh, finally got a hold of him, I'd called him four times since Natalie died. My mom promised to help and didn't keep her word. My dad promised to help, didn't keep his word. Katie Cahill was going to help, didn't keep her word. I called these people out because they didn't keep their word. And you know what? I'm going to continue to do so. I said that I was going to kill all of the people who threatened to kill me. All of the people who, uh, whose lies resulted in me, my friends, and my family being hurt. I still plan on killing them with time. My goal is to see all of these predators in prison, and they are predators. Alicia Bollinger is a predator. She's pretty, so it's okay. Pretty girls should be allowed to do whatever they want, including destroying innocent men's lives. That's the message America teaches. That's what we teach our girls. To manipulate and lie. They wanted their drugs. They got their drugs. A lot of people saw the harassment in these groups and didn't say anything. They saw what these people were doing to me. 
You know why I was posting in those groups? It wasn't for the people in those groups. It was so that it was documented and seen by someone who might do something. Katie Cahill? No, she's not going to do anything. She's going to talk about it. That's why she was exposed. She knew what was going on and did nothing. It's the same issue that I had with Natalie, Maddie, and Alicia. They knew what was going on and did nothing. That's not entirely true. They pretended like I was the bad guy. Ted Bollinger should not have raped his daughter. I'm going to see to it that that man goes to prison for all eternity if I have my way. See, I love all these people who stabbed me in the back. They were all good to me once. Of course, the difference between when they were good to me and now is that I had a good back back then. I was everybody's designated movie. They give mover. They give me a sob story and I show up. What they didn't realize is that I didn't need a fucking bullshit sob story. All you had to do is ask. All these people who offered to help. How I needed. That's the reason that I let them waste my time. Is because they said they would help how I needed. And every one of them. Every single one of them. Proved themselves to be liars. Now Amanda. Amanda Ingeline. She's the one that really spoofed me. Because although I knew something was up because of her mom. Amanda kept doing stuff, kept pretending, kept playing along. But then, when it all came down to it, it turned out she hadn't done any of the things that she said she was going to do. She had only pretended to. She never sent that paperwork in. I asked her to show me how to do it. She said, no, it's, it's all right, Sean, I'll take care of it, I'll take care of it. So I let her take care of it. And later on she threw it in my face. That I let her take care of it. But she didn't take care of it, did she? No, she didn't. Uh, uh, I got all your stuff centralized like you wanted to. No, you didn't. That paperwork had your mom's address on it. As soon as I left there, your mom was all sorts of pissed off and sending all sorts of mean shit to me. And you and your mom ganged up on me to do that. The worst you can come up with is that I stink. Yeah, that totally makes everything that you did okay. All of the head games that you played about Jamie. All of the head games you played about Bradley Dollinger. Meanwhile, he's back in your house, isn't he? This guy who fucked you and your mom. And you said you never wanted to talk to again because of the way that he was... Using a single mother. And I go up there to get my computer. And my notebooks. Obviously. You knew it was in those notebooks. Or you'd have given them back. I got my computer back. A year after you stole it by illegal means. And I have no problems calling you a drug dealer, because I know you have been a drug dealer. Whether or not you are now, well, I would hope not. I would hope you're too paranoid to sell marijuana now. I'm not actually against marijuana. I think marijuana should be legal. I think I should be able to grow my own marijuana. However, it's still against the law now, isn't it? Amanda Ingline tried claiming that an officer told her that a medical marijuana recipient could give their marijuana out to anyone they want. Well, that officer lied. Amanda, who was that officer? Now, I could call the police in Montana and let them know. So why don't I? 
Well, because I don't want Amanda punished. I want her to tell the truth. She's not going to. The things that her and her mother and Miss Jerry pulled? Well, shit, I'm not the only victim. I am not the only person they did shit like that to. Now, Lana has a history of doing the shit that she did. With Miss Jerry, not so much. I mean, yeah, Miss Jerry had pulled some pretty fucked up shit, but she never pulled anything as fucked up as Miss Lana. Not until what happened in Montana. I did my best. But it wasn't good enough because it was just me and one person is not enough. Miss Jerry has never in her entire life made it on her own. She has always had to depend on other people. Men especially. And she was cute once so she could get away with that. But she's getting old and starting to look like a grandma. So it doesn't work as easily as it used to. Christine Buheat made a comment about that because she's dealing with the same thing. Men used to be easy to manipulate when she was young and cute. That's what she said. Imagine that. Meanwhile, it's all men's fault. Women play head games and fuck a man out of everything that he's ever earned. And it's a man's fault. Well, with all due respect, I judge people on an individual basis. But I also look at every badge as a criminal. Because I know better. I know better than to believe that that guy is some magic robot who follows the law to a T because he's wearing a badge. Fuck no. They got bias, same as the rest of you fuckheads. Me? I want my life to be over. Because I needed help. I begged for help. And if you notice... When I was nice to Shannon Alvarado, she didn't do shit. It was just pretty words, pretty words, pretty words, but no follow through. Then when I'm an asshole, she wants to do something. I don't want to be an asshole. I'm tired of being an asshole. I was nice and I told you what help I needed and you blew me off and blew me off and got drunk and drunk and drunk and drunk and drunk and drunk and drunk. And drunk. Katie Cahill, I waited on her to keep her word for six goddamn months. At least six months. Sorry, at least nine months, because uh, she said she was going to help before all that shit happened last August. It was because these people were full of shit that I had to do desperate shit. They're not going to keep their words. They're going to talk out their asses. I'm not allowed to be pissed off about all the shit that I've gone through, but Katie wants to be pissed off about a video. Well, now there's lots of videos, Katie. How do you feel? I can easily take them all down now. I know how. But just like with Rayanna Ingersoll, I'm not gonna. You had your chance to come forward. You had your chance to be honest. You had ample opportunity in the last year to keep your word. Let's see how long it's been. Let's pretend that you didn't say you were going to help until last August. So let's go August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June. Oh God, that's 11 months. That's almost a year, isn't it, Katie Cahill? That's a lot longer than the two days you're pretending. By the way, I'm going to go back and make that video public. Because those are your words. Your own words, Katie. When I was nice, you didn't do shit. But when I'm an asshole, then you might do something. I shouldn't have had to be an asshole, bitch. You had plenty of opportunity to tell the fucking truth. You were playing head games. If you were telling the truth, you'd have kept your fucking word. It wouldn't have taken you 11 goddamn months.
Meanwhile, I'm exaggerating by saying a year. By what, a month? By what, 30 days? That's a lot closer to the truth than your two days, Katie. And then there's a lot of people like Karamia. Didn't keep her word, didn't keep her word. Fucked me over repeatedly by believing other people who were full of shit. Didn't bother to find out the truth. Didn't bother to look at both sides. Just assumed and shat on me. Fuck you, Karamia. You're a piece of shit. You got kids? You shouldn't be allowed to raise kids. You're a fucking drama hound. The things that you did are fucking illegal, Karamia. The things that you did are illegal, Katie Cahill. Not just immoral, illegal. Against the law. It is against the law for you to misrepresent yourself, Katie Cahill. Not only did you misrepresent yourself, but you did not follow through. And then you want to be pissed off that I exposed you. Well, with all due respect, I tried being nice. You bullshitted me. Just like everybody else. Y'all starting to understand why I'm an asshole? It's because being nice doesn't get a goddamn thing accomplished. If you're nice, people think everything's fine and fucking dandy. And they can just move along. Move along now, Sean. Just move along. It's all fine and dandy because you're not throwing a tantrum. I have been treated worse than a barnyard fucking animal. At least you kill a barnyard animal when you're done abusing it. You should have told the truth. The truth. T-R-U-T-H. Now, the cops refused my report repeatedly. Now, Mandy Hughes, who has warrants out for her arrest, could not make one. But then, of course, she was able to go down to the courthouse and make a report about her shit. And those officers refused to listen to her about me. What was their excuse before I had those warrants? I want to know that. They did everything they could to entrap me and prevent me from showing evidence. And nobody gave a fuck. Those who did give a fuck didn't give a fuck enough to do anything about it. Except give me pretty words. I will always find a way to speak out. You destroy my Facebook, I'll make another one. However, I got my Facebook locked down now, so you can't destroy it. That evidence will be preserved. And I wouldn't put it past these people to go to the very same judge who should be in prison for what he did, putting Natalie Bollinger at risk. Had I actually been a predator, I could have gone to Natalie's grandma's house and killed Natalie's grandmother. Oh, that's right. It wasn't Natalie's address. While Tim Beeson was faking on the uh, Sword and Scale episodes 109 and 110 that Natalie was afraid that because I was walking up Federal just a few minutes from her house that I was stalking her. Well, I'm sorry, Tim, but that wasn't Natalie's address. That was her grandmother's address. Miss Danica informed me. That's first. Second, Tim... You raped a little girl. I'm not going to stop shaming you. Not ever. 
You should have killed me when you said you would. I'm not pissed off at you for saying you'd kill me. I'm pissed off at you for not following through. Natalie was going to end up dead no matter what. And I knew that I would get blamed as long as I was alive. By the time I threatened anybody, did I threaten to go killing the Bollingers? Did I threaten to harm Natalie or her family or her friends? No. Matter of fact, that threat was meant to keep them safe. To keep Shelly safe. To keep Danica safe. To keep Alicia safe from Ted. That was right after uh, my grandmother's funeral. Sorry. Just before my grandmother's funeral. I made a video saying if anything happened to them, I would kill him. Do I have it in me to actually kill somebody? No. I didn't threaten anybody else until August. I threatened to kill those who threatened to kill me. I also threatened to take Natalie and Alicia, or, or uh, Alicia and her mother to court. So they did everything in their power to coordinate with the police to prevent me from being able to go to court. The very police that I was trying to make a report about and was prevented from doing so. Because I was prevented from making those reports, those people got to take their conflict of interest and use it to abuse the fuck out of me. That judge had a conflict of interest. That very same judge who did wrong in Natalie's protection order intentionally covered up his own wrongdoing with Miss Shelley and Miss Danica and several of the officers who had abused me. Go fuck yourself, Lana and Amanda. You whores deserve death, too. And you know what? I'm going to take my dear sweet time. If I'm still alive when you die, I will literally piss on your grave. Matter of fact, I got half of mine to go piss on Natalie's. Just because I love her doesn't mean it's right what she did. I'm not going to. Because I feel that Natalie was as much a victim as I am. But there's a possibility that she was the perpetrator. I want to know the truth. You guys just want to see me hung. Natalie Bollinger's family were her actual predators. Look at her dating history. She dated drug dealers who were volatile and violent. <clears throat> she didn't go after them, though, did she? She went after me because I was easy. I was easy to take her aggression out on. People want to pretend that I'm a hateful person. I'm not. I'm fed the fuck up. <laughs> 